Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Folygon, and in this video we are going to look at an advanced ZBrush tutorial for improving character appeal. I have a character sculpt of Mushu from Milan here, already imported into ZBrush. Uh, this is a character sculpt by Ricardo, who sent this in and was asking for some critique on their character. Overall, I think this guy's looking pretty awesome, and with a few uh, fundamental ideas, I think we can really start to push this even further. And we are going to look at one of those specific fundamentals today that's called straights and curves. The basic idea with straights and curves is exactly what it sounds like. You have one side of your model that is straight and one side of your model that is curved. And this sounds a little bit weird if you've never heard of this. It's kind of considered a little bit of a 2D fundamental. But uh, here, we'll just kind of clip off our sphere to uh, get a really basic idea of the silhouette of our shape. So as we can see, one side is straight and the other side of our silhouette is curved. So this is the most basic way to look at and understand this principle. In truth, it's not really about one side being straight or another side being curved. It's really about the relationship between these two sides. And it doesn't really have to be straight and curved. It really just has to be more visually interesting on one side than the other. So we want to try to incorporate this fundamental into our character sculpt. So we'll go ahead and go back to Mushu here. I'll even open up this concept image that I have of Mushu. It's just a screenshot from the film. And I want to point out a couple areas where straights and curves is used over here in the Mushu illustration. So Mushu is very noodly. He's a very uh, long and stretched out character. So in truth, there's not a ton of very applicable areas where this is uh, going to kind of be incorporated, but there are still a few major areas that I want to point out that can help to kind of push and improve this character design. So there are two basic things that straights and curves really helps to uh, emphasize in your character. The first is that it helps to lead your eye around your character. We can see a very subtle instance of straights and curves happening in our character's body. So if we look at the uh, back side of our character, it's a relatively nice, clean, straight curve all the way throughout, flowing all the way down the character's back. But on the uh, front side of our character, it's... It's still definitely curved, it still definitely has this kind of idea present, but as we get up to about right here, right at this point, there is a definite turn in the surface. So we can see that curving and wrapping up, and then right here, this is where it gets a little bit visually different, where we have almost a complete, almost a complete straight line kind of flowing all the way up the front of the body. And then it kind of turns and wraps back into a curve up into the head. So this idea is helping to lead your eye around this shape specifically. Another example of this that's a little bit more uh, visually distinct is up here in the uh, shape of our ear. You can see that the uh, top side or back side of our ear is almost perfectly straight flowing through here. And then this side has a nice curve to it. So it helps to create a nice visually interesting stylized shape right there for the shape of our character's ear. The second thing that straights and curves does is it helps to bring focus to specific areas. If we zoom in on our character's head up here, we can see this idea in the face. So this is a little bit more abstract for the concept. It's not the exact silhouette or specific shape that we are seeing, but it's more so a combination of a lot of shapes that are happening here in the face. So if we flow down the character's chin on the bottom, we have a curved shape for sure, but this is the more simple side of the entire silhouette of our character's head. Whereas up top, we have a much more kind of complex shape. And I won't outline this perfectly, we'll just do kind of an averaging of some of these shapes here. And I'll kind of bring this off the uh, surface down here as well. So we'll just kind of look at that shape. So this is basically what we're looking at in terms of straights versus curves in our character's face. So down here at the bottom, we have this pretty simple line, this pretty simple shape, just a kind of simple curve. And then up top, the silhouette is much more complex. And that helps to bring our eye to the top of our character's face, where the eyes and all the expression live. So there's a lot of stuff going on here with this concept, and there are a lot of ways to implement it. But let's see if there are a couple areas where we can integrate this concept into Ricardo's sculpt. So let's go ahead and start with one of the uh, more obvious places that we notice straights and curves happening, and that was with our uh, character's ears. So I'll go ahead and grab these two meshes and go ahead and set these up real fast. All right, so I've gone ahead and turned off all the poly paint and color on this shape, and we are just going to focus on form. 
So we want the top portion of our ear to be a little bit more straight. So I am just going to simply use my move brush to start tugging and pulling on this geometry here. And we don't have to get this, um, you know, perfectly straight. That's not really the uh, point of our concept. It's really to just create a little bit of a visual contrast here from one portion of the silhouette to another. So we're starting to get that a little bit more straight here. We'll go ahead and delete this one on the other side for now. We don't really need it. And that is starting to feel a lot better to me. All right, so we've done it. We've, we've achieved straights and curves. Well, sort of. We've done it from one angle here. So we are 3D artists, so we have to kind of incorporate this idea into every angle that we possibly can. So that feels pretty good from the front view, right? We're starting to get that incorporated very nicely there. But as we start to rotate around, things kind of start to get uh, a little bit crazy in our silhouette, a little bit warbly, and uh, not, not quite as clean as we would like. So let's go ahead and start focusing on straights and curves here. So to do this, I am just going to create a quick little mask through this shape using the Mask Lasso tool, one of my favorite masking tools to use. And we'll just go ahead and start giving this a nice clean curve on the back side, and we'll go ahead and get that mask back yet again, and try to kind of pull this out a little bit more on the front, to start flattening that out, straightening it out, and getting a little bit more of a visual contrast there. So now we have incorporated that not only into the front view, but also into the profile. And if we look at this kind of straight on, it looks like we're getting a little bit of some awkward dip in a couple different areas, so there's probably some uh, added volume that we could get here as well. But I think you guys kind of get the basic idea here that we are looking to achieve this idea from as many possible angles as we can. So that's where things really start to get uh, difficult when you are attempting to translate a 2D character concept into 3D because a lot of the time this stuff doesn't translate to every possible angle that we need to achieve. And that can be really tough, especially once you start getting into posing and you find that things in 2D tend to be cheated. But uh, let's go ahead and look at a couple more areas here that we can work on improving straights and curves in this character. Another area that this concept is really applicable is typically found in the limbs of your character. So I've gone ahead and remeshed the uh, character's arms here really quickly. And we're going to look at these uh, in silhouette only. So let's go ahead and turn off the poly paint and I'll just flip the color to black. So let's go ahead and get an idea of what we're looking at. So unfortunately, what I can tell is that the shape is not what we would call perfectly parallel, right? These are not perfectly parallel lines, but they are symmetrical in what's happening in the silhouette. And that ends up being very visually boring. So let's try to incorporate some straights and curves here to make this a bit more visually interesting. I really like the dip in that we're getting on this side of the silhouette. I think that looks really cool. So let's uh, get a little bit of the opposite happening on the other side of the arm. So I'm just gonna use a quick clay brush stroke or two here to fill in some of that volume and start getting a little bit more inflated on that side of our silhouette, just to kind of break up the monotony. And if anything, we could maybe even exaggerate and push that in a little bit more over on this side and try to push that even further. Now it looks like our arms are a little bit thick towards the top, so I might try just giving a quick little rotate up here to thin some of that out, and we are getting there. So we are getting some nice kind of straighter shapes happening over here, and if anything we can start to exaggerate that push even more. So now it's a very subtle change, right? But it definitely makes a difference, and especially once we start to incorporate this into a uh, many different parts of our shape here. So let's uh, try to get this into the back of the arm as well. I think the front of the arm could be a little bit more of a bulge in the opposite direction. So let's change this from being concave into something that's a little bit more convex. And I'll do the exact same thing that I did before, just adding a, a little bit of volume very quickly here with some clay brush strokes. Play around with that. And voila, just like that we are starting to get a bit more visually interesting and starting to break up that shape even more. So this is uh, definitely applicable down in the forearms as well, and it's actually happening just a little bit through here, whether intentional or not. But uh, we could go ahead and go through here and continue to push that shape a little bit more. 
But instead of doing that, I would like to look at one more example and one more actual tool set that you can start using to make this process uh, a little bit easier on yourself for when you are trying to uh, push your shapes a little bit further. And we are going to do that down on the uh, character's legs down here. So let's just go ahead and we'll turn off perspective because this is always easier to do with perspective off. And I will hide everything except for the character's legs. And you know what? Just because, just to make this as simple as possible, let's delete one of the character's legs as well. And we'll turn off polypaint. So looking at our character, uh, or looking at our character's leg and looking at the geometry, the surface is a little dirty. So I would like to clean this up, and I would also like to incorporate straights and curves down here. But if I start using my clay brush, like I was using up on the arm, you can see that I'm starting to get these brush strokes, and if I try to smooth these out and clean them up, I'm still getting those, um, those nasty brush strokes on there. So it's not really looking all that clean. It's not really looking all that good. So how do we make this easier to work with? Well, we are going to look at Z remeshing and uh, projecting this form onto something a little bit more clean and simple. To do that, we are just going to duplicate our leg. So I'm just going to duplicate that object and I am going to hold the control and shift key, click up here and grab a slice curve brush. We'll go ahead and select that. You can find it down here. And very quickly, I'm just going to draw a couple slices through this piece of geometry. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a couple new polygroups. There are a couple different ways to do this. I'll show two different techniques for it. The first, again, is that slice curve brush. So hold Control and Shift after you've selected that brush and draw a quick little slice through your geometry. Now this is probably not the tool that we want to use here because you can see that the back of the leg is not lined up with the knee very well. So instead what we're going to use is the mask lasso tool. So hold the control key, click up here, and just find and select the mask lasso brush if you don't already have that selected. And I'm just going to click and draw my marquee selection. Go ahead and get that where I need it. You can see that the angle's a little offset here. So now we can start to clean that up with a couple additional masks, or if you want to switch over to your mask pen brush, there are a lot of different ways to go through and clean up masks. But that selection looks pretty good to me. So now it's ready for uh, polygrouping. And we can do that just by clicking Control W on our keyboard. And we can go ahead and do this down here as well. So let's just do that really quick. We'll get the ankle and foot as a new polygroup. And that's a pretty terrible color, too close to the other one. So there we go. We'll undo and redo that again. So that's looking a lot better. Let's go ahead and Z remesh this and get this cleaned up. So remember, we have this duplicated. If you have not duplicated your mesh, go ahead and do so now. Scroll on down here and find Z Remesher. We are going to keep this on the default settings. If for some reason you've changed these, make sure it's on adaptive. Set your target poly count as low as it'll go and go ahead and turn on keep groups. So go ahead and click on Z Remesher. Let that work its magic. I'll go ahead and skip ahead so we don't have to wait for the whole thing to calculate. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. So now you can see that the mesh is uh, much more simplified. We have much fewer polygons. The uh, geometry uh, kind of fits within this pretty nicely here. There are a couple areas where it's a little bit stretched, uh, so we might want to increase the resolution a little bit uh, to get some better results, but I'm going to keep it where it is and just go ahead and go through the process as we normally would. So from here, I am going to turn on solo mode. You do want to make sure that both of these eye icons are still visible. And then you can subdivide the geometry with Control D, scroll on down to Tool Geometry, or I'm sorry, Tool Subtool, Project, and just go ahead and click on Project All. And that'll go ahead and start projecting the form from our higher resolution mesh onto our new mesh that we are subdividing and stepping back up. The benefit here is that as I keep doing this, I am going up through my subdivision levels, and we can go ahead and delete that because we don't need it. So now we have this leg here, I can step up and down through the geometry and continue cleaning this up much easier than uh, what I could accomplish with just the dynameshed piece of geometry. So I can start getting rid of that nasty surface here, as well as the brush strokes that I made down or up here in the upper leg. And we can also uh, start incorporating straights and curves into the upper leg uh, much more easily than uh, if we were trying to do that with just the dynameshed piece. So overall, much, uh, much more uh, easy to work with for the geometry. Um, very simple, you know, takes a couple minutes to do. It's not very, um, very complicated in structure. So if you guys have never played around with using projections, uh, it's definitely something that I encourage you to, uh, to try incorporating into your characters a little bit more frequently. 
Uh, it is uh, worth noting that this geometry doesn't have to be final. I wouldn't be attached to this uh, at all, really. Uh, it's something that you can continue to work with. Uh, you can swap back to Dynamesh at any time if you want. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot of benefits to working with this uh, over Dynamesh. And if you guys are interested in learning more about the differences and benefits of working with Ziri Mesher and Dynamesh, uh, I'll include uh, a couple videos down in the description that you guys can check out to find out some more information. Again, a huge thank you to Ricardo for sending this character in. If you guys are interested in learning more about creating awesome, stylized, and appealing characters, check out my course, The Appeal Academy. It goes even more in-depth on the concepts that we looked at today, and is designed to be more of a mentorship, as well as a class, that provides personal feedback on your progress. If that sounds interesting to you, you can learn more at appeal.academy. Again, hope you all found the video helpful. Click that subscribe button if you're new around here, and I look forward to talking with you all again in the next one.